No letter for South Korea's former president as prosecutors seek a warrant for her arrest in the country's influence peddling scandal. But why are they seeking to detain her now, so shortly after she was removed from power? And though Chinese students have often been accused of lacking in creativity, the UK is turning to China's elementary textbooks for inspiration for its own math courses. Are creativity and mastery of a subject exclusive or can they coexist in education? Welcome to The Point. I'm Li Xin. A woman who claimed she was married to her country is facing 13 criminal charges by that country. A former president of South Korea could possibly live behind closed bars after being accused of bribery, leaking government information, abuse of power, among other offenses. The scandal comes at a difficult time for South Korea, which is already contending with uh, sluggish economic growth, sliding exports and a heightened threat from Pyongyang's nuclear program. Why has has the scandal caused huge chaos in the South Korean society? What are the reasons behind it? Will it give the nation an opportunity to reform itself and fix relations with other countries? To discuss these issues, I'm joined by Ms. Liu Yingwing, Assistant Executive Editor and Chief Commentator of Beijing Review, China's National English Language News Weekly since 1958, and Donald Kirk, a columnist with the Korea Times newspaper. But before our discussion, let's take a look at the timeline of South Korea's political scandal, which led to the impeachment of Pa Gung Hye. Mr. Kirk, let me come to you first. Now, South Korean prosecutor's decision to apply for an arrest warrant for Park Eun-hye happened just a few days after a long interrogation in a graft probe. Is it unusual for the prosecutors to do that? What do you think are the underlying reasons behind this quick move? Well, the whole case is extremely unusual. Uh, they were under tremendous pressure. The prosecutors were under tremendous pressure to act decisively uh, in the case of uh, Park Geun Hye, there were huge demonstrations calling for uh, her arrest just last Saturday, as they've been going on for weeks. But not, even though she was no longer president, they they're still demonstrating furiously to uh, get her charged and arrested. Uh, there's tremendous resentment of the historic ties between conservative leadership and the uh, huge chebol or business conglomerates that dominate the South Korean economy. And there's also uh, always been the, the whiff of corruption surrounding this relationship. In this case, uh, the prosecutors are fairly confident that they have a case against uh, uh, Park Geun Hye for her relationship with her confidant, uh, Chae Soon Shiel, uh, a, 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 a friend of many years standing who's been mm -hmm. in prison since October in this matter. It was, she's at the heart of the whole controversy. So uh, I think the prosecutors are acting uh, uh, not overly hastily, but pretty much as expected in this matter. Mm -hmm. Ms. Liu Ming, confrontation between Park's supporters and opponents have deeply divided the South Korean society. Two supporters of Park have uh, even died during a street valley. If she is arrested, in your mind, would it ease the kind of tensions at home or would it bring more chaos? Well, first of all, I think no nation can afford such 
scale of protests and demonstrations and chaos in, in such a long period of time. So it's, it's, it's high time that we can bring an end to it. If, if Park were to be arrested, it can certainly help stop the bleeding, but the wound is there. I mean, the problem is never just political. It's about the economy, the security reasons. So I think for the next president of South Korea, I think his priority is first to, to heal the nation, the divided nation, and then how to bring uh, the economy of the country back to its right trajectory. Uh, and the important thing is how uh, can the ruling party and the oppositions can sit down together and come up with the, uh, you know, comprehensive plan for the nation's economy and bring benefits to the people. And I think that is a very urgent issue for the next president. So it still depend on what the next moves will be. Mr. Kirk, Park's political scandal has created turmoil and brought uncertainty to the country since last October. But on the other hand, some people are saying it could be a breakthrough for South Korea's democratic system, given the fact that the decision, for instance, of impeachment was made by the Supreme Court without being affected by other political powers. What is your view on that? Well, well that uh, is the optimistic view. Certainly, it could be a breakthrough for reform. It could lead to more reforms. Uh, on the other hand, there's a deep chasm in South Korean society between conservatives and uh, progressives or liberals or whatever you want to call them. Uh, the uh, liberals uh, seem to have uh, gained uh, uh, the ascendancy here. They're uh, likely to uh, get their candidate, uh, a gentleman named Moon Jae-in, uh, into the presidency. Certainly, he's, he's uh, the po ahead in the polls so far. But there's tremendous opposition from conservatives. They've been waving uh, Korean national flags at demonstrations, and they've been waving some American flags, too, a reminder of the historic depth of the Korean-American alliance. Uh, so uh, this uh, rift in Korean society is likely to go on. Uh, possibly, as you indicated, uh, as was indicated, that they'll be able to heal this rift. Possibly they'll, they'll be able to come together on economic reforms. But there's no guarantee, and there's certainly no guarantee uh, on their coming together over North Korea. Uh, uh, Mr. Moon has been saying that he wants to talk to uh, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. He mm. said that he wants to bring about reconciliation, a reminder of the historic sunshine policy mm -hmm. under the late President Kim Dae-jung and his successor, the late No Mu Hyun. Uh, so uh, we'll see, because uh, there, there's huge opposition to uh, reconciliation among conservatives. Uh, so it's going to be a very interesting uh, contest here, and, uh, and the optimistic view, as you indicated, is that perhaps it'll all work out for the better and that there will, and we'll see long-lasting reform. Mm. Uh, can I add a few things? Uh, sure, I, go ahead, Ms. Liu. Uh, I think it hardly can be called a breakthrough in the political system of South Korea because it is the South Korean political culture. And uh, it is like a lot of, well, the South Korea adopted this, uh, the Western-style democracy in 1988 with one person, one vote system. And let's take a look at six presidents uh, after adopted the, uh, such system uh, in 1988. They have six presidents, right? And what happens to them? Let's do the math. Two of them were, uh, 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 you know, thrown into prison, and one of them committed a suicide uh, after uh, by jumping off a cliff, and one of them. Uh, uh, came down June, uh, well, the, the Nobel Peace Prize winner for reaching out to North Korea, and but his three sons were put into prison because of influence Petley and all others. So I think this is this kind of same old story, which is can hardly be called the breakthrough in this political system. I think it's just you know the same thing going on uh, again and again. Mr. Kirk, what is your reaction to what Ms. Liu just said? Are we seeing a really fundamental flaws of the system of uh, the South Korean political system? Well, certainly she's indicated this whole pattern. Uh, no president has gotten out of the presidency without some uh, measure of disgrace. Uh, it's true that the first president under the de so-called democracy constitution, No Tae-woo, he was a general, and he wound up in prison uh, for his role in the Kwangju revolt along with his predecessor, General Chun Doo Wan, and also for uh, accused of massive corruption. And then Kim Yong Sam's son uh, wound up in prison. Uh, that was the successor to No Tae Woo and DJ Kim Dae Jung. Uh, 
was, it was said to have passed huge bribes to bring about the North-South Korean summit and win the Nobel Peace Prize in, in 2000. Huge transfer of money from South to North Korea. And as, as uh, was pointed out, uh, to all three of his sons actually wound up uh, facing charges. Uh, two of them went to prison uh, for varying periods. Uh, and then the, the successor to uh, No Mu Yun, Im Myung Bak, our former Hyundai executive, uh, managed to escape without getting charged himself, but his brother uh, was convicted and jailed. And certainly there's a cloud of, uh, of, of question marks over Im Young Bak's uh, honor and integrity. Uh, and now we have finally uh, President, uh, former President Park Geun Hye uh, in disgrace. And, uh, and uh, likely, uh, at the end, by the end of this week, she's likely to be in jail under indictment on these charges. So yes, there is a pattern. Uh, uh, and. Uh, it is hoped, uh, optimistically again, returning to the optimistic side of the ledger, it is hoped that out of this uh, great uh, conflict, this huge conflict mm -hmm. of demonstrations and so forth from right on the part of the right and the left, it is hoped that some good will emerge. It's hoped that uh, perhaps uh, there will be a, a stronger and more democratic and more reform-minded uh, system here. Uh, yeah. No, no, no promises. Well, we'll see what happens. Sure. To cure such a big problem, you probably need a deep operation. We haven't really touched on the problem of uh, chables in the South Korean society, which has been extremely powerful and huge influence on the on the politics of, in that country. But we really don't have time to go in there. But very quickly, Ms. Liu, how do you see the future fate of Park Geun Hye? Uh, I think uh, it's very possible that she will get uh, amnesty after the new president swears in um, because after all she is a woman and the people's sympathy toward a female leader who was who will be put in prison and after she is out from her um, Blue House uh, residence and certainly sympathy will start to grow and then I think uh, because she has lived her share of adversity uh, she lost her parents at a very young age and I think and, and I hope she can get that amnesty uh, very soon. Okay, we'll keep an eye on that and we'll keep the audience updated. Many thanks to our guest uh, Kirk joining us from Seoul and uh, Liu Ying here in Beijing. Well, here is my first point. Another month, another chapter in the Park Won Hye tragedy. Removed from the presidency facing 13 criminal charges, she has refused to show any regret for the situation or those who could have been saved in the immediate aftermath of the Seoul ferry accident which killed over 300 people. Clearly, she is not the person many thought. While she bears blame for the events, also do those whose greed and selfish interests led them to use her as a puppet. Each country has its own development path, but clearly there are issues with the systems that depend on money and special interests to elect their leaders. May will bring new elections. Hopefully, will also bring wiser and better leaders who can create a superior system to serve their people. You're watching The Point. I'll be The news that Chinese math textbooks will be introduced into Britain has again caught the attention of people in China and abroad. Publisher HarperCollins first introduced the Chinese elementary maths textbooks into Britain in 2015. This time, it signed an historic agreement with the Chinese publisher to release a series of 36 maths books in Britain. Actually, the textbook deal is only part of the UK's Teaching for Mastery program announced last July. The program aims to spend over 50 million US dollars to support half of England's primary schools in adopting maths teaching methods from Asia. Why does HarperCollins introduce the textbooks? What in the eyes of the UK government are the benefits of the Chinese elementary education system? For more insight, I'm joined by Fiona McGlade, a primary publishing manager of HarperCollins Publishers, Raymond Delambre, curator-in-chief of the French Ministry of Higher Education and Research, and uh, Wang Yen, director of the Department for International Exchange, the National Institute of Education in China. Na National Institute of Education Science in China. Welcome all of you to our program. Let me go to you first, uh, Fiona McGlade. Tell us more details about the 36 textbooks. I understand they will be available for the next school year. Would they be on the national curriculum? 
Um, that's correct, yes, we're going to publish um, in September. Um, there's going to be, uh, for the six primary year groups, we'll have a textbook, um, a teacher's guide, a practice book uh, for each year, and there are two terms in each year. Um, they'll be submitted to the government's Teaching for Mastery programme, um, and we hope they will be endorsed on that. Um, then schools will receive some matched funding to implement uh, the textbooks as part of their Teaching for Mastery resource. So it's part of the bigger picture which the UK government is implementing really to adopt a lot of the Shanghai um, mastery methods in the teaching of primary maths in order to try and raise the attainment of UK children, especially from primary age. Mm -hmm. Ms Wang Yin, why do you think the UK is so interested in the Chinese math education system from Shanghai? And how does the Chinese Education Authority view this move? Uh, well, I think the China has impressed the world by its uh, performance in the mathematics in 2009 PISA uh, test and then again 2012. And also, China PISA is the international testing system where uh, it's quite internationally recognized for its uh, ability to measure the students' uh, performance in science. Just to just a footnote for the PISA system. Please go ahead uh, again. Yeah, and then even though the Chinese rank has lowered in 2015 in the most recent test, but still uh, it is one of the top four performers in the mathematics. And also recently. Uh, the uh, BBC documentary uh, Young Chinese, Tough Chinese Teachers also impressed the world and uh, is uh, something like an impact evaluation and uh, testify the effectiveness of the Chinese pedagogy compared with the British. And uh, also there are more and more bilateral teacher and student exchange between China and the UK and uh, more and more participants has witnessed the uh, effectiveness of the teaching and the learning in classrooms and in schools in China. Mm -hmm. Raymond Delambre, the test results of the past few years of the PISA program, which uh, we mentioned just now, show students from Shanghai as among the top performers in math. However, there have also always been the, this perception abroad and in China that Chinese students learn by rote. How do you look at the Chinese learning system uh, for this moment? First of all, uh, dear Chin, Xi Xinyi, uh, for your great invitation you. in Beijing. Uh, you are welcome too. <laughs> uh, the topic, your topic, uh, is linked to the increasing soft power of People's Republic of China, based, hopefully, on some tradition. Let's recall China's abacus. China invented a lot, so why not uh, uh, good mass textbooks, even for Westerners? About education, China's teachers don't apply the presumed uh, more collaborative way of uh, teaching, uh, who, uh, which is uh, the mainstream in West. You know the debate uh, is direct instruction versus inquiry learning. In a way, uh, the new textbooks uh, from China in UK uh, is a kind of comeback of my dear Kongzi Confucius. Uh, China remains a country where some Confucian values still remain, uh, like obedience to uh, direct teaching uh, linked to obedience to elders. In China, uh, it's rare to see China's teachers have to spend much time and energy to simply keep the noisy children quiet, as in France, for instance, especially in the suburbs <laughs> that I uh, personally snubbed. Uh, what makes great teaching, both in uh, West and East? Especially during the early primary school years, teachers need to be explicit about new discovery, about what they teach and make better uh, use of world class learning. Mm -hmm. uh, instead, instruction when dealing with new information should be explicit and direct. Right. Uh, I could make a link with uh, China's thought. Uh, within China's thought, there is an emphasis, strong emphasis about on practice. Children are told, if you want to learn something, practice 
practice and practice more. It's again, and you will get better. Like yes. for some Buddhism, and once yes. again with Confucianism. Yes, um, Ms. Fiona uh, McLeod, let me come back to you. This is not the first time that uh, HarperCollins uh, has introduced the Chinese textbooks to the UK. You have done that in 2015, but now you have decided to translate a whole set of math textbooks, 36 of them, and literally without any changes. Don't, what has been the feedback since your first introduction, and what has prompted you to do this much on a much bigger scale now? Um, yes, well, we first uh, partnered with East China Normal University Press um, to bring their one lesson, one exercise practice books to the UK. Um, and they were very successful. The teachers um, who used them had fantastic feedback for us. Um, but we called it the Shanghai Maths Project very deliberately because uh, the idea was to collaborate with teachers to um, make sure that the contents were suitable for the UK um, and to make any amendments that were deemed necessary for UK schools. Um, we have done that and we are working now with um, both Shanghai so UK experts to create the teacher guidance that we're going to publish as part of our original Shanghai maths programme. Um, however, this new program that we are um, going to publish with um, Shanghai Century Mathematics, um, that is a different program. It, it consists of a key textbook, which is something we don't have with the Shanghai Maths Project. Mm -hmm. um, and it's something which has been used actually in the teacher training program that the Department for Education are funding through the math subs in the UK. So it's recognised as a fantastic resource um, and we're very, very keen for our teachers to be able to have that resource themselves. Um, we know that Chinese teachers have refined these books, they have, um, they, they have uh, I think, 10 years of pedagogical mm -hmm. um, academia behind them and so we don't think that we can improve upon them we think that we can just translate them and teachers will really benefit from using them but as part of a mastery approach to teaching it does go hand in hand with the training that the teachers are receiving from the government as well sure uh, Ms. Wang Yan some Chinese elementary education system is lacking in creativity and we should learn from Western education systems but now not only the UK but also some other countries are very interested in our learning methods. Why do you think this change came about? Well, actually this change has now came, uh, come out about overnight. This is kind of like a result of the uh, two decades reform that started from the end of 1990s uh, when China has started its curriculum. So over almost 20 years there is a lot of change with the teacher curriculum and also the way of teaching and the learning in the classroom. For example, uh, now we see more and more cultivation of not only the knowledge itself, but also uh, things like uh, knowledge and skills and also process the methods and the attitudes, devotion, uh, emotions and values as uh, highlighted in the new cur cur curriculum framework issued by the central government. And also this is complemented by some other traditional approach to reinforce the teaching and learning. For example, the pedagogical research, that's, uh, uh, the, there is a specialized institution that send researchers to schools to support mm -hmm. teachers' professional development, etc. And also their uh, disciplined culture and uh, class-based community learning. And uh, that all help build so solid uh, knowledge foundation for the students. Thank you all very much. Because of time constraint, we have to leave it there. Many thanks to Fiona McLeod joining us from London, to Raymond Delambre joining us from Paris, and from Ms. Wang Yan joining us here in Beijing. You have been watching The Point here on CGTN. My last point is right after this.
Well, you have heard the experts in the endless debates about the right way to teach. There appears to be an yin and yang relationship between mastery and creativity, collective and individualistic learning. Mastery is no substitute for creativity, but without mastery, you cannot create. Collective learning ensures no one is left behind, but does not encourage anyone to leap ahead. Clearly, which teach young children mastery of score of core subjects is a necessary step before they can learn to solve problems. The schools in the UK have decided to embrace the Chinese method to balance what they already have. For sure, much more hard work is needed by the students if they really want this to work. That's all for this edition of The Point with Milu Xin. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter using the handle The Point with LX. Download the CGTN Live application to watch our show on your mobile devices. For previous shows, go to the CGTN channel of YouTube, click on the playlist and look for The Point with Lu Xin. Thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow at the same time.